Let's convert layouts, primitive shapes, into meshes for use as landscapes, asteroids, or swirly things. Let's start with the basics, create a null, and let's call it landscape. Close that down and hit P for properties. Now where we see this primitive type, we'll select shape. So we have a few to choose from. As you can see, we've started with a sphere, we've got a cube, cylinder, torus cone, and you can even create your own. But I'm not going into that because quite honestly, it goes right over my head anyway. <laughs> so we'll start with the cube. To see what we're doing, I'm gonna pop over to the view tab here and I'm gonna select the add viewport. Here's the viewport. I'm gonna turn on VPR like this. I'm gonna optimize a bit by going to the camera. I'm gonna turn off adaptive sampling. And while I'm here in the lights, or rather the environment light, I'm gonna turn off the visible to camera. Okay, so shift click on the surface, we'll bring up the surface editor. The first thing to know is these primitive shapes have no mesh and are saved with the scene. Which also means it's conveniently added a surface to this shape without us having to do anything. We'll open the nodes. Now one of Lightwave's many strengths is its textures. Let's get a procedural node. If you click on this drop down, you've noticed that we have access to a ton of textures. To get the ball rolling, I'm just gonna choose this dented texture here. I'm gonna take the value and I'm gonna put it into the displacement. Let's make this window a little larger here. Let's go back to our properties. Let's walk through a couple of these parameters quickly. Radius is pretty straightforward. Obviously you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Let's make it a little larger here. The displacement height kind of does what it says on the tin. So let's make that larger as well. And that's already quite an interesting shape. And accuracy, contrary to what you might think, the smaller the number, the more accurate. Now for our demo, we don't need it to be this accurate. So I'm gonna to go to the maximum of one, which I think means basically the least accurate. Does it go higher than one? No, one it is. These primitive shapes are very useful without any displacements, but as you may be able to tell, as soon as you start displacing, render times can absolutely go through the roof. The other issue is that you can only see these displacements in VPR. So the question is, how can we convert these primitive shapes into something a bit more useful, like a mesh? Well, we can do that using OpenVDB. I'm gonna leave this on plane, but I'm gonna make it a bigger radius of 10. I'll close the object properties, double click on the procedural, and we'll just make the scale a little larger. You'll notice there's a bit of clipping up here, so I might take the foreground value down a little bit, just to counter that. Here we go. This is what we have, just a single null with a primitive shape applied to it. Create a new null, call it OpenVDB, just so we can follow along. The landscape, we don't need it to render, we don't really need to see it. Not that we can see anything, so we'll turn it off. We're gonna keep this open a VDB setup really simple. So P for properties, under object replacement, we need that open VDB evaluator. So our landscape is applied to a shape object. So we'll go shape to volume. Source primitive is that landscape. And we need that to be a level set, which it already is. But we also need that to be in world coordinates. Now I'm not entirely sure what my scale is here, so I'm gonna make the voxel size quite large. We'll say 0.8 and we'll work our way down depending on the scale. So we take the grid into the grid. Let's turn on the wireframe. Okay, so we have a very low res representation of that landscape. So voxel size, we will take down incrementally 0.1. The only downside to this technique is we're gonna to need to nudge the timeline. Now the keyboard shortcut is the left and right arrow key, which should speed things up a little bit. Obviously, smaller the number, the more voxels, the longer it's gonna take. So if we go down to there, give the timeline a nudge, you can see it's thinking about it. We get a much more detailed open VDB at the expense of time. Now I'm gonna go back to 0.1 just for this demo, just to keep things ticking along. What we could also think about doing is getting a filter, add a dilate, we'll fatten it up a little bit. 
And you may also want to get another filter and smooth it out a bit. Play around with the settings. Medium values, quite interesting. Gaussian will just smooth out those pieces. Perhaps turning up the iterations. Sometimes iterations work, sometimes the voxel offset works. It's a bit of a weird one, which I've never quite got my head around yet. But for now, I'm just going to use the grid on its own. Obviously, we can go back and change this at any time, but for now, let's just close that down. Let's go back to the surface editor. And you'll notice the open VDB has its separate surface, but we want to go back into the landscape and have a play in there. I'm also going to open up the properties for the landscape. So we have access to these properties. And now it's kind of very much up to you to have a play. So for instance, displacement height, we can pump that up quite a bit. Remembering to hit the arrow keys left and right to update the timeline. With the procedural, don't forget these options here. And then you can start to play with the other textures. Tweak the settings of the open VDB so they're not quite so dull. Change the texture, nudge the timeline, play around with the scales. We've reached an environment we like. We want to save this out as a mesh. The first thing you need to do is save your scene. I found this to be quite crashy, so yes, definitely save first. Once done, Make sure your open VDB object is selected and up in file, we'll go save, save transform object. So let's just call this land one. There you go. <laughs> Great. That's exactly why you should save. We're back. Let's instead go to frame zero. See if that makes any difference. Okay. Open VDB selected. So we'll go to save, save transform object. Fingers crossed. We've done it. Excellent. Okay, so let's just load it up. Check it has done what we think it's going to do. Land one. Nice. So that's all ready for further manipulation. Perhaps in modeler. Perhaps a bit of metamorphic. Anyway, you get the idea with that. So we can close that down. Let's remove that. Back to the procedural. If you were lucky enough to purchase the IFW2 textures when they were about, definitely check out some of those because there's some absolutely amazing textures in there. It's very much a shame they're no longer available. If you don't have IFW2, don't worry, because the Render Man collection is still available on Dennis's site. I'll put the link below. And finally, let's not forget this shape object is changeable. So if we don't like the plane, perhaps we want an asteroid. So there you go. You could literally whittle away hours fiddling around with this. <laughs> so. And the nice thing is you've got quite a nice amount of detail there without that extra render hit. Here's a breakdown of that swirly thing. So it's exactly the same setup. I have an open VDB null here with the evaluator. This has been saved out to a sequence for rendering here, but all I've done is in this filter, I've dilated it and I've blurred it a little bit. And that's pretty much all I've done there. 
The base shape is just a plane, as I showed earlier. If we look at the surface editor, the open VDB mesh is just a principled BSDF here. And on the base, exactly the same setup as previous example. I'm literally just using a procedural with one of those lovely IFW2 space procedurals. I've set it to vortex. All I'm doing to get the animation is I'm adding a bit of animation on the position and the rotation. Just a bit of movement on the Y position. And I'm basically rotating it clockwise. Hopefully, speak soon. <laughs>